next talk by um, Elena Sophie uh, Pridja from Germany. And uh, she's going to talk about the association of HPV DNA presence with P16 expression in oropharyngeal cancers compared to other head and neck cancers, dysplastic and non dysplastic head and neck squamous epithelium. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I have no conflicts of interest to declare. And in analogy to what is known from the uterine cervix, P16 overexpression has been suggested as a marker for HPV-induced transformation, also in head and neck squamous cell carcinomas. And in the past years, overexpression of P16 could be found in a substantial proportion of HNSCC, particularly within the oropharynx, and um, in the vast majority of cases in association with HPV DNA or RNA detection. However, there is some remaining unclarity about the significance of P16 overexpression in different regions of the head and neck, and so far no systematic analysis has been performed um, uh, with respect to the P16 expression patterns in non-dysplastic and dysplastic head and neck squamous epithelium and in association with um, HPV detection. The objectives of our study, therefore, were to assess the significance of P16 expression patterns and their association with HPV infection in different regions of the head and neck, and to compare these P16 expression patterns in the head and neck squamous um, carcinomas to those that can be found in dysplastic and non-dysplastic squamous epithelium. And finally, we also wanted to assess the proliferative potential within these P16 overexpressing areas. We therefore analyzed a total of 50 non-dysplastic samples, 34 dysplastic samples with a clinical diagnosis of leukoplakia, and um, 65 oropharyngeal as well as um, 82 non-oropharyngeal samples. We, in the first step, we analyzed P16 expression patterns and assessed the proliferative potential. On the one hand, um, we stained with um, immunohistochemically stained um, for P16 alone using the Syntec kit, uh, kit on FFPE sections. And in the second step, we uh, performed a dual staining procedure for simultaneous detection of P16 and Key67. And this um, was done with a Syntec Plus kit by um, MTM Roche on FFPE sections, which is intended for use in cervical cytology, um, and therefore we applied some minor um, modifications. We then determined HPV DNA status, uh, performed genotyping, and assessed semi-quantitative viral load using Luminex technology. And in case the samples proved to be HPV positive, we then analyzed for HPV6 um, star 1 transcript. Um, after microdissecting regions of interest from FFPE sam uh, samples and um, performing real-time quantitative PCR. And I would just like to briefly comment on the dual staining procedure that we were using. Um, there are two important mechanisms for P16 overexpression. On the one hand, um, as you can see on the right-hand side, um, P16 overexpression might be induced by stress-associated um, indu uh, stress mechanisms, and if there's an intact downstream pathway, this will result in, P uh, in a senescent cell state and will be reflected by P16 overexpression in the cell. Um, without concomitant proliferation, and therefore you will not detect key 67 at the same time. However, for example, in HPV-induced transformation, um, P16 overexpression does not um, result in a senescent cell state, but the cell proliferate because of um, downstream alterations, and in this case, you would expect a nuclear key 67 overexpression and a cytoplasmic P16 um, overexpression as the cell proliferates at the same time. We analyzed um, the um, P16 expression pattern with respect to staining intensity on average, intracellular staining localization on average, and percentage of positive tumor cells in the case of the HNSCC. And um, one important aspect was also to look on the distribution of the P16 positive cells, and we applied um, definition for diffuse and focal staining. And um, the idea behind using this classification based on a clonal pattern is that in HPV-induced transformation, the cell will um, acquire a 
P6 in overexpressing phenotype, which will then be passed on to the daughter cells by proliferation and will produce a continuous or clonal pattern, whereas, for example, in senescence, the cell does not proliferate anymore, and thus um, this would rather um, result in a patchy or focal P6 in expression pattern. At first, I would like to show you the results for the head and neck squamous cell carcinomas. We detected um, HPV DNA in 20% um, of the samples in the oral pharynx, 10% um, of the oral cavity, and no HPV DNA was um, detected in the hypopharynx and larynx. The highest um, in, uh, prevalence of HPV DNA was detected in the, oro, uh, in, in the tonsils, and um, we also stratified to sample age and found that there was a significant increase to 43, around 43% between the years 2005 to 2009. In the next um, slide, you see um, all those samples that were e either HPV DNA positive, showed uh, P6 in expression to some extent, or both. And um, in the first, um, as you can see here, um, in the first, uh, the first paragraph re um, represents all those samples that were HPV DNA positive and showed P6 in expression. Second paragraph um, are those samples that did not show any HPV DNA but were showed some P6 in expression, and the third paragraph represents those samples that were only HPV DNA positive. However, in the following, I will concentrate on those samples that, were, um, that showed P6 in expression to some extent. And um, from the um, first um, results where we analyzed staining intensity, localization, and percentage of P6 in positive cells, we found that the percentage of P6 in expressing cells was significantly associated with HPV DNA status, and this was true for both oropharynx and non-oropharynx. Um, with the other staining um, patterns regarding staining intensity and cellular localization, no correlation was seen to HPV DNA status. Next, we assessed for the distribution of the P16 overexpressing cells within the tumor and um, a diffuse P16 expression. This was at least 10% of the tumor cells um, showing a diffuse, uh, showing a clonal um, P16 pattern. Um, it was detected in 21.5% of the oropharyngeal and around 5% of the oral cavity samples. And this diffuse P6 in expression pattern was significantly associated with HPV uh, DNA positivity in the oropharynx. However, this was not, um, the same correlation was not seen in the non-oropharynx. Then we analyzed the P16, P67 co-expression pattern, and um, we found that in all diffusely P16 positive um, samples, there was simultaneous P16, K67 co-expression. And um, in the oropharynx, these diffusely or dual stain positive samples were positive for HPV DNA in around 86% um, of cases, whereas in the non-oropharynx, this pattern was associated with HPV DNA detection in only 50%. And to give you an impression of the patterns that we were seeing with the dual staining procedure, um, you can see this focal P6 in expression staining with, the, um, yeah, with this patchy um, P6 in distribution um, in the middle of the tumor and the proliferation on the, uh, at the invasion front. However, none of the cells here were dual stain positive. And this is opposed to the diffuse P6 in expression pattern, where you can see a lot of dual stain positive cells, particularly at the invasion front, also can be seen here, I hope. Um, and um, we finally, in the last step, correlated um, this, these findings with the E6 mRNA status, and these are preliminary results, however, we thought they, they are interesting and therefore we would like to present these preliminary results um, because all of the 13 already analyzed HPV DNA positive samples that showed a diffuse P16 expression pattern were also E6 um, star 1 transcript positive and this was true or which indicates biological activity and um, this was true for both oropharynx and non-oropharynx. As you can see, there were two analyzed non-oropharyngeal samples with this diffuse expression pattern, and this was also correlated with um, E6 um, RNA detection.
Finally, um, the results in the non-dysplastic uh, tissue, we found HPV DNA positivity in 8% of the samples, and we observed frequent focal P6 in expression pattern in the tonsillar crypt epithelium. Um, however, in these cells, no, um, or in these areas, no diffuse P6 in expression or P6 in K67 co-expression was observed, and um, none of the um, P6 in expression patterns correlated with HPV DNA positivity. In the dysplastic tissue, um, HPV DNA was detected in 41.2% of cases, and diffuse P6 in expression was observed in 23.5%. And um, as with the head and neck squamous cell carcinomas, we found that all those samples that showed diffuse P6 in expression um, also had um, cells that stained um, dual positive for both P6 in and K67 and um, no correlation was observed between any of the analyzed P6 in expression patterns and HPV DNA status, and particularly in this group, it will be interesting to analyze the E6 um, transcripts to really uh, identify those samples that um, are biologically HPV active. So to sum this up, we found that um, a high percentage of P16 positive tumor cells correlated significantly with HPV DNA positivity in um, our um, observed HNSCC, both oropharynx and non oropharynx. In the, um, the pattern of diffuse P16 overexpression points to a transforming process in the head and neck squamous epithelium. So this could be observed in premalignant and in invasive lesions, but not in non dysplastic tissue. And in dysplastic tissue, um, th this Diffuse pattern points to a transforming process irrespective of HPV DNA status, whereas in the oropharyngeal HNSCC, um, this diffuse P6 in expression pattern is strongly associated with HPV DNA presence and also with biological relevance of HPV, whereas in the non oropharyngeal um, HNSCC, the association with biologically active um, HPV infection was only seen in 50% of those samples that showed diffuse P6 in expression. However, you have to keep in mind that only four percent, uh, that only four samples were um, uh, showed a diffuse P6 in expression pattern in the non oropharynx and finally, staining for P16 expression alone in the head and neck squamous epithelium gives a tantamount significance compared to dual staining with P16 and K67 when a classification between focal and diffuse staining is applied, as this diffuse P16 expression is, uh, points to a more transforming process, whereas with focal P16 expression, um, this pattern is uh, compatible with a non-transforming process, for example, in the context of synaptic. I would like to acknowledge all those that took part in this study, and particularly my doctoral advisor and head of the department, Professor Magnus von Knebel Döberitz, and my direct supervisor, Dr. Miriam Reuschenbach. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very, thank you very much. Any questions? Please. Thank you. What is your explanation to the fact that you found HPV in 40% of dysplastic epithelium and only 20% in cancer? Yes. Um, actually, um, we were also su quite surprised by this finding, and um, therefore we repeated the analysis twice also um, actually also done by microdissection in the second step. And um, I mean, it might be possible that um, in the dysplastic tissue, um, this might contribute or give a, a suitable su um, surrounding for HPV DNA persistence or might even be um, relevant in the induction of um, transformation. However, then later it becomes less important. That would be one explanation, but we don't know. <laughs> 